All right, Dr. Mori with Uncivilized Vitality, and we're going to continue our health and wellness series. We're going to talk about restoration uh, number one. Daily quiet time is vital. So we're going to unpack our uh, restoration uh, decivilizing steps. Daily quiet time is vital. Uh, resting and sleeping on purpose is number two. And then number three is to uh, minimize or, or declutter to de-stress. So... Um, we're going to go through the restorations one at a time. In this video, we're going to talk about the first and obviously the most important. These are the vitals, the vital ones. Um, daily quiet time is vital. When you think about this, we unpack it like um, all of life is stress. So you've got two types of stress. Okay? Two types of stress. Distress and then something called eustress. Okay? The, the key is in the prefixes here. Think of distress as the, uh, the negative, if, if you want to, the negative types of stress we deal with. And uh, eustress is um, also uh, the same type of stress, it's just the way we, we interpret that and what, how we deal with it. Eustress is uh, the type of stress that paradoxically causes us to uh, get better or grow. Uh, sort of um, uh, hormesis, um, where you get those kind of little bit of stresses. Um, you're exposed to cold a lot. You're outside at one of our camps. You're out for three days and it's 20 degrees. And then by the time you go home on that third night, after the third night sleeping outside in 20 degree weather, you come home to your house. <clears throat> the house is set an internal temperature of about 68. You'll find it's really, really too warm. Whereas before you went, camping at 68 degrees would have been too cold. But being slowly exposed to a little stress, in this, in this sense, uh, example, cold weather stress, you slowly built up a tolerance for it. So it prepared you to deal with uh, slightly lower temperatures. Um, now that could easily cross over into distress if you're out there in just the shorts and t-shirts uh, for two or three nights and it drops down to the single digits. That might be a little too much stress for your system, which would change it from a, a, a good um, positive promotion stress to a negative or, or a taking type stress, uh, distress. But all the life is kind of a balance between these two things. There's constantly uh, stress in your life. You'll react to all, both these stress with your sympathetic, the sympathetic portion of your autonomic nervous system. I'm sure we got a video on the ANS somewhere uh, on the channel. If not, we'll get to that um, pretty soon. So the sympathetic <clears throat> is what some people know as their fight or flight. Uh, system. It's really your freeze, flee, and then fight in that order. Um, there's other F's involved, but we're going to keep this PG-13 and come back to those maybe in the A&F video. The other half of your ANS, uh, it's not quite half, but the other portion of your ANS is called the parasympathetic system. Right? The parasympathetic system, and that one is the rest and digest rest and digest portion of your of your autonomic nervous system. Your autonomic nervous system is your it handles all of your uh, um, unconscious and subconscious stress responses. Okay, so uh, if you're a little colder outside, you might release a little more uh, thyroid hormone and pump up your metabolism a little bit to stay warm. <clears throat> Uh, if you get down to the temperature is too cold and it's becoming distressful, your sympathetic system might kick into some, some body shivering and shunting of blood away from your extremities in preference of your organs to keep you alive. Autonomic nervous system is what handles your responses to stress, you stress and distress throughout life. Now, the way it works is you're only supposed to be freeze, fight, or flee about 10% of the time. These are for emergencies. Right? Typically, your ANS sympathetic side is going to kick on, freeze, flee, fight in an emergency when there's distress. Okay? Most of the time, the good eustress is handled by the parasympathetic portion, which is about, you know, depending on, on who you read, 80 to 90% of the time, your rest and digest portion is in charge. Um, eat and secrete, feed and breed, there's all sorts of names for that half, but it only works when you're in a non-emergency situation dealing with just basic stress like I got to get up and move around because my back aches from sitting or I feel that you stress uh, uh, pangs in my stomach that lets me know I'm hungry and I need to find something to eat or I'm thirsty or I'm tired and I need to rest. Okay? This is all to say 
that you need to have a good daily balance. Emergencies are fine, but you can't be in a distressful, high stress, emergency, dominant tone all day long. You never get the rest. Modern society and civilization is distressful. I'll unpack that in some of the other videos, but that's kind of our entire premise. So in order to counterbalance that, you need to get daily quiet time. You need a minimum of 60 minutes a day on your own. <clears throat> on your own, and uh, think of it this way, because uh, cell phones, the internet's ubiquitous, think of it that as your, your 60 minutes of daily unplugged time. Not necessarily sleeping, not necessarily watching TV or, or uh, even reading a book, which is painful to me, but just 60 minutes of daily quiet time. Spend it in meditation, spend it in prayer, spend it in just quiet, uh, quiet contemplation. Sometimes daydreaming is good for you. Just sit on the porch and um, don't do anything. Watch the clouds. You can break this into four 15-minute segments to half-hour segments. You can break it into 12 five-minute segments a day, whatever you need to do. Spread it out through your day, but this is a minimum. 60 minutes a day, you need to turn off the distress responsive portion of your system, downshift into your parasympathetic dominant tone, let some of the good stresses come. I like to spend my 60 minutes and combine that with my floor time. Uh, with I do that in 10 minute segments throughout the day, half an hour or so a day of just getting down and stretching. That's my daily quiet time. Then I'll spend another the rest of my time either daydreaming or uh, sitting and thinking. Sometimes Tori comes in the office and I'm staring at the ceiling. <laughs> I'm sure she thinks that's the time that I've stroked out finally, but I'm not. I'm just having my daily quiet time. The other reason that this is vital, besides balancing out your autonomic nervous system, allowing you to deal with the different uh, batches, batches of distress that come up every day, and balance out your ability to handle good stress or convert good stress into positive things like growth and, um, and health, is... Uh, the fact that if you don't take care of yourself, you can't help anyone else. This is the, the paradox of um, altruism. It's uh, the, the, the example most people know in modern times is the airplane. Um, you get on there in the safety lecture, they say, put your mask, your oxygen mask on first before you help your child, right? Uh, think of this in, from like EMS. Uh, you, you can't run onto a scene before you've secured the scene um, because then you might become another casualty that someone else has to rescue and you've just doubled the, the workload on others. You have to take care of yourself before you're uh, of any good to anyone else. Okay? This is, uh, if you're going to help others, you have to make sure you're able to help them by staying safe and not rushing into danger. <clears throat> uh, on the daily, you want to make sure that you're not about to blow your gasket with too much stress so that you're of no use to anyone else in your life and you can help them out. Okay. The only way to do that is to carve out a minimum an hour a day of quiet time. It doesn't have to be solitary time. Point of fact, most of the week I get my the rest of my 60 minutes at night when the wife and I are sitting around um, just kind of looking at books or talking or just sitting around stretching uh, before we go to bed at night. So you can, you can overlap this. It doesn't have to be in isolation, but it does have to be uh, unplugged. It does have to be disconnected. It has to be non-distracted. This one will make a lot of people uncomfortable because nowadays people are not comfortable with their own thoughts for any period of time. Um, some people even go so far as to panic. That's just an indication that you need this more. Start out small. Give yourself 10 minutes a day for a couple weeks. Build up to that 60 minute minimum so you can become more uncivilized and get back to balancing these systems out. An old Zen saying is, uh, you should sit for 20 minutes a day in meditation. And if you're too busy and you can't find 20 minutes a day to meditate, you should sit for an hour a day. And uh, that's great advice. And it's uncivilized advice. So um, think about this. Uh, come to one of our monthly meetings. Check with Logan. Send him a message on social media and get the Zoom link if you can't come in person. Uh, join us for one of our campaigns. Like and subscribe to the channel. And check out some of our other uh, health and wellness videos our philosophical videos, and of course we have tons and tons of field craft videos. So uh, go ahead and check some of those out.